All right, let's talk about uh, normalization. So normalization is the um, uh, is the, is, is the um, the task of trying to remove uh, redundancies by uh, repeatedly splitting up uh, tables into smaller and smaller sets right, of of fields. Right. Uh, that um, uh, you know the you know, one one of the classical examples is that if you if you have um, you know the the, simp the more, most naive way of capturing information is that you have one big uh, one big spreadsheet you know in Excel yes and you have first name last name address uh, phone number email blah, blah 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 all that right and and as folks are filling out forms you're you're typing all this information into a, into this uh, sheet. Uh, and then you know a family comes along and and they, ha they have all unique names but they all live in the same address, right? And and you find yourself repeatedly entering the same address for all of them, right? Uh, and 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 you can you can immediately see that as you as you copy paste uh, this data, you find yourself that this is very very error prone, right? You could inadvertently misspell a street uh, or misspell a uh, you know the, the 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 street number or whatnot. Yes, uh, where conceptually they all live in the same in the same at the same address. Uh, you could inadvertently misspell something and and just uh, enter enter garbage into this database. Yes, uh, so you immediately say, hmm, maybe it should not. I should not have copied you know, five times this address. A preferable way of doing it is perhaps could I instead maybe have a different sheet where I capture the address only once. Right, and then have you know all the original five folks refer to that same uh, row in this other spreadsheet. Yes, uh, now uh, you know there's m much less um, uh, possibility that I, I inadvertently mistype it. If they all move as a unit to some other place, right, I can change the address in, in one single place. There's no way that I could mistakenly you know uh, update one but not update the other. Yes, right. So so now. You know this 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 uh, uh, this intuitive uh, thing that we did of splitting up the spreadsheet into two, perhaps, uh, is what we've just done. We ju we've just applied normalization. Okay, it is the is the is the fact is the uh, uh, is the act of splitting up the data in such a way to remove the the um, the risk of inconsistency. Right when we identify possibilities of redundancy. Okay, now some redundancies are trivial. Like the one, the example we just did, right? Some redundancies are harder to 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 identify, right? And and, and there's several techniques on how to address different types of redundancies, okay? Uh, and so that's where the first, second, and third normal form, and so many other forms, they deal with different types of redundancy. All right. So we'll look at the most trivial examples first, and then we'll we'll look at some more uh, challenging ones later. Uh, so yeah, so th the idea is that we want to decouple the updates, right? That um, uh, when when you when you, for instance, if I if I have these five folks in one sheet with five times the address, if I need to change the the, the address, I need to update four records, right? A and and so that's error prone. Ideally, I would only update just one record. Right? So so that's one of the things. Uh, that uh, we always strive to do that, that that you split it up so that updates you only have one updates not multiple updates uh, so let's look at the uh, first uh, normal form um, so so the first normal form is that uh, we're, we're looking for um, non repeating fields okay we're looking from within the same table right fields that are not repeating right over and over the same information right that we might want to break it up Right, but we, we don't quite know how to break it up. Okay, so we'll look at a couple examples of that. Uh, we'll we'll uh, you know repeating fields introduces um, you know waste of disk space. You know less flexible. Let's look at an example. Right, so here we have um, you know three folks, Alice, Billy, and Daniel, uh, and we're capturing the, the their phone numbers here. And and this might be fine uh, until uh, we we realize that uh, some of these folks have more than phone more than one phone number. Right. Uh, so there's several ways that we could go about capturing all these phone numbers. One of the uh, most naive ways that you might uh, decide to do it is that perhaps I just um, the phone is actually a comma-separated list of, of phone numbers, right? Uh, one of the problems with this is that uh, obviously now now the uh, the kind of like the name or the uh, the or 
it makes it harder, for instance, to search for something, right? To search for a particular individual that has a specific name, a specific phone number. Uh, and now I can't just pattern match and say, oh, just match it with the telephones, right? I need to now do some some string manipulation and some substring, whatnot. So it makes it much harder uh, to to compare and search uh, for 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 information, right? Uh, and it also kind of loses the the original intent of that uh, uh, of that column. Yeah, so that's that's one way that we could go about it. Uh, we just have we we just concatenate uh, several uh, multiple values uh, for in in one single field. The other the other uh, way that uh, we could go about it is that instead we we decide to that each phone would be captured in a separate in a separate column, right? Uh, and we just have telephone one, telephone two. Uh, but this is somewhat uh, inflexible and says, well, what about if they have more phone numbers, right? You know, how many phone numbers could you possibly have, right? Uh, so, so you know, you might decide that, well, you know, I'll just create a whole bunch of them, you know, three, four, five, and and I'll leave them there just in case, right? Uh, oftentimes that leads to lots and lots of empty data, you know, lots of nulls everywhere, right? And and uh, you know, and database folks hate that, you know, have, have all this, all these nice records, just empty space everywhere. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, Alice and Daniel, you know, they only have one phone number, and so they don't have, they don't need the telephone number too. Uh, so, so again, this is not, this is a suboptimal solution as well, right? Uh, it's, you know, it doesn't scale. You know, what if I, had, what if I want a, you know, uh, a zero to infinite, is, uh, you know, something generic, you know, other than telephones. Uh, the other, the other way to do it is that instead we can split it up into separate records, right? Where your know, Billy Squire. Is uh is captured twice, uh, it's in, in two separate records where we have the phone numbers in different records. Again, here we we're adding redundancy. Billy and Squire is being captured twice. You know, if I need to update their uh their their first name to William, uh, I need to remember that I need to update these two records as opposed to just one. So that's error prone, and we don't want to do that either. So none of these uh, uh, solutions is is optimal. So how do we do this? Right. So the the best solution is to just split it. And say, well, I'm going to capture uh, the, uh, the 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 information of first name, last name, and whatnot in one table, and I'm going to capture the the telephones in a separate table, right? Uh, and, um, and 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 I'll have a one-to-many relationship where one of them will be a foreign key pointing back uh, to the original record, saying, "Hey, these phone numbers are for are for for uh, Jane Wright or or Billy Squire or whatever, right? Pointing to to the original." So. This is what we refer to as the first normal form, right? Splitting it up, where we are avoiding uh, redundancies within the field or different columns or different records, right? That that that, that uh, and this is the easiest uh, form of uh, of redundancy that we can deal with, right? So, so whatever whatever uh, data model you come up with, certainly it needs to meet uh, first normal form, right? Uh, otherwise, you know, we we'll, if if it doesn't, you know, we say you know it's breaking. First normal form, yes. Uh, so, so that's the the first one. So the second one. Uh, notice that we're building up to something, right? We say that um, um, basically what we want uh, is is what we talked about earlier: functional dependency, right? The functional dependency is that fields should depend on the key, right? Data must depend on the key. Right, meaning, meaning that uh, uh, Billy Squire here, the value of Billy Squire here, you know, is uniquely identified, you know, by four, five, six. Right, nowhere else should you should be able to to see catch that information. Right. Uh, so, so the first the first uh, uh, paragraph here says, you know, data must depend on the key, where a second normal form. Uh, we're going to say the data should depend on the whole key. Right, so data should depend on the key, on the whole key, right, and then this third normal form. Uh, so here we have a, a an example here where the uh, the data uh, has a, um, a composite key, right? You have uh, the the course ID on the left hand side, and you have the semester, right, as the second column here. Yes, and together it's a, com com a composite uh, a primary key. So the primary key that's made up of two keys, yes, of two fields. Make sense? Right. Now, if we look at the non-keys, if you look at the key, the non-keys, we have 
you know, the number of seats that are available in that particular section, uh, the name of the course, yes? Uh, and uh, uh, now when, when we look at our data, uh, we look at, we, we realize that, uh, that, that we have a course name over here depending on the key. So the functional dependence is okay, right? It is depending on the key, but we realize that it's not depending on the whole key. Right? Notice that it's independent of what the semester is. It's the same course regardless of what semester it is, right? So it's completely independent. And this, this course name over here is completely independent of the, on the second key, right? It's dependent only on the first key, but it's not dependent on the second key. Make sense, All right? Uh, so certainly that, that uh, we, we say that that uh, uh, adds a problem, right? It's problematic. Again, I could inadvertently update uh, uh, programming and uh, I, I you know, to change in your know, fundamentals of programming, right? I want to rename the course, and I could inadvertently modify one, but not the other. And uh, and the solution, it's always the same, right? We're going to split it up into separate tables. Right? We're going to split it up into separate tables. Uh, we're going to leave the leave the seats. The seats uh, do depend on both, right? The seats. For the for one semester for a particular course was 100 seats, but next semester we got a bigger room and now we can fit now 200 people, right? So it could change from one semester to the next, and it depends on both the course and the and the seat, which is great, right? So so seats doesn't break second normal form; it depends on both the, the course and the and the semester, but the course didn't. The course only depended on the course ID. It it, it was irrelevant about the semester, so we split that off, right? We said. Okay, we're going to represent the course in a separate table. We're going to catch the course name only once. We're going to have the course ID and then have this primary key also be a foreign key that points to the courses over there, right? Or vice versa, maybe. The, the, the courses ID over here are foreign keys that point to the primary keys of these courses over here, right? So that we, we have a relationship between the two. Make sense? Right? So, so we don't want to have fields here, right? We don't want to have fields here that that have a partial functional dependency, not a full functional dependency, right? Uh, that has to be fully dependent on the entire key. Right? Here we have a partial dependency. Uh, here we do have it, right? The, our course name entirely depends on the, on the key, right? Uh, here's another example. We have Alice. You know, we have an employee. We have the skill. Um, and... Um, and we have a primary key, which is a composite. The employee and the skill is unique. Right? So Alice has several skills. You know, she's a QA. Uh, she knows CSS. She knows HTML. Uh, Bob only knows Char uh, jQuery. Charlie knows Java and C Sharp. Right? But it's unique. The combination of the person and the skill is unique. Yes? Uh, and where are they working? Well, you know, Alice is working in Cambridge. Uh, Charlie is working in Newton. Uh, and uh, we realize that um, uh, the location is only dependent on the person, right? Where is Alice? Well, Alice can only be in one place, right? She's in, she's in Cambridge, right? And Charlie uh, can only be in Newton. Uh, Charlie cannot be working in two different places. Well, I don't know, in this, in this economy, maybe <clears throat> two jobs. Uh, so, so yeah, so the location is dependent on the employee, but not the skill. It's irrelevant what the skill is. I'm, I'm applying all three skills, all of them in Cambridge. So again, so here too, we have uh, this, this table, right? It's breaking second normal form. And, and this, you might expect, you know, questions like this in a quiz or something, you know, here's a table, uh, what normal form is it breaking and how would you fix it, right? Um, uh, and, and, you know, and, and uh, and I would give you perhaps some some uh, some primary keys, you know, uh, represented in this notation. And I would ask you, you know, with this dependencies, you know, what what uh, which which functional dependent which uh, notation normalization are you breaking? Uh, so the way to fix it is to have separate tables, right, where you have employees and skill in one table, and then you have an employee and their location in a different table, right, and then you have one of them be a foreign key back to the to the other, right? To, to know, you know, which which employee is working where. Okay. Now, now second normal form might not be enough, right? Meaning that uh, your your table might might perfectly pass first normal form, 
my perfectly passed second lumbar form and still have redundancy. All right, so let's look at a couple examples. Uh, notice that we have here, uh, we have a course, which is a, a, in a year, and together it's a, it's a primary key. So it's a composite primary key. Uh, we have the professor here, Alice, and, uh, and, and you know, she's teaching web dev, and Bob is teaching intro to DB, and Charlie's teaching C++. And notice that I'm capturing the, uh, the, uh, the birth date of the professor. Okay? Notice that the, he, we, here we have a functional dependency. We have the, the, that, the, that the professor, uh, the, the date, date of birth of the professor only depends on the professor. So there's a functional dependency. So immediately, immediately we, we know that uh, if there's a functional dependency between one field and a non-key field, right, there's a, there's a, there's a risk of, uh, of redundancy and, and inconsistency, right? So, so we have fields in there that don't depend on any of the keys. Right, are only depending on on other fields, uh, but it uh, it it it, um, uh, it it passes second normal form because because they they both um, uh, you know you have the same person has the same date date of birth right uh, they 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 both depend on on web dev and whatnot but I could easily have Alice in Wonderland here uh, you know inadvertently modify the the uh, the date of birth. Right, mistakenly updated, and there's no way to catch it. Right, ideally, they, you know, together, Alice and the date of birth would be, would be some key that would be unique. Right, that, that would make sure that uh, uh, that person only has that one birthday. Uh, so, second normal form doesn't doesn't save me from this. Right, this uh, second normal form doesn't save me from this. So, we need to add additional constraints. You know, additional an additional requirements. Right, so course in year is a primary key and other fields depend it. So it's okay with the second number form. But we can mistakenly change the professor's birth date. Right, so we can fix it uh, adding the third normal form. Uh, so as we had started earlier, we had said that you know, first normal form, second normal form, we said that, yeah, that, um, uh, that the data should always depend on the key, on the whole key, and nothing but the key. Okay, so on the key, uh, the whole key, right, and nothing but the key, right? So, so it should not be you. You should not have these dependencies between between these, right? Um, so again, we we're going to split it up into separate tables, uh, uh, where we have Alice in Wonderland and then the date of birth in a separate table, uh, and we say that that this is now achieving a third normal form, right? Uh, the good thing is that they all build on each other, right? If you if you pass if you um, uh, comply with third normal form. You know, it's uh, it's a uh, it, uh, it's 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 implied that 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 you also pass second normal form and you also pass third normal. So they build on each other, which is great. Okay. Hi everyone, Jose here. Uh, please remember to subscribe and like the video. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you.